Russia awakes to biggest attack on Russian soil since World War II. The biggest attack on Russian soil since the Second World War continues as waves of attack drones continue to fall on Russian oil refineries, military bases and security services. At least 60 drones were spotted over not less than seven Russian regions overnight on March the 13th, with at least seven more in a morning wave, Russia's defense ministry announced. A major oil refinery is ablaze in Ryazan. Military bases were targeted in Voronezh and an FSB building was damaged in Belgorod as multiple waves of drones continue to fall in regions across Russia. A missile threat was also reported by the governor of Kursk Oblast. The waves of drones are a continuation of attacks on March the 12th that saw Russia deal with at least 25 drones over nine regions that struck at least two oil facilities. A Russian Air Force base in Butulinovka and a military airfield in Voronezh were targeted in the mass wave of airstrikes, an informed source told NV on March the 13th. It is believed that the strike was organized by Ukraine's security service with other representatives of the defense forces, the source told NV. The consequences of the attack are being clarified. Part of the city of Voronezh was blocked, including the southwest market after a drone attack, while another community in the region was left partly without electricity. Some districts in Butulinovka are experiencing power outages following a drone attack, local outlet Astra reported. Major oil refineries in three Russian regions were the main targets of the overnight attack organized by Ukraine, a source told NV. Our task is to deprive the enemy of resources, he said. Large oil refineries in Ryazan, Kostovo of Nizhny Novgorod Oblast and Kirishi of Leningrad Oblast, all among Russia's five largest, were targeted in the mass drone attack, he said. The attacks are a continuation of a series of special operations against enemy refineries that the Ukrainian army had previously launched, the source said. We are systematically implementing a well-calculated strategy to reduce the economic potential of the Russian Federation. The source added, Our task is to deprive the enemy of resources and reduce the flow of oil money and fuel that Russia directs straight to the war and the killing of our citizens. This work will be continued, pledged Andriy Yusov, a representative of Ukraine's military intelligence. The people of Sweden are preparing for war with Russia. In Sweden, fearing a possible war with Russia, the population began to prepare for general defence. Sudwest published information about this. Canned food, portable filters for drinking water, first aid kit and radio. These are what the government recommends to keep in reserve, the information stated. Even experts have called to collect three months of food reserves. Charlotte Petri, the head of the Swedish Emergency Situations Agency, said that the concept of total protection is to prepare the population to live independently in crisis conditions. The Finnish Security and Intelligence Service warned Sweden of increased threats from Russia after the country officially became the 32nd NATO member, ending decades of neutrality in the wake of war in Ukraine. Finland, who shares a 1,340-kilometer-long border with Russia, joined NATO on April 4, 2023, after Russia began its special military operation in Ukraine. The Nordic country's NATO membership drew military threats from the Kremlin, with Russian President Vladimir Putin accusing the West of dragging Finland into a military alliance and creating a rift between Moscow and Helsinki. According to the Finnish authorities, since joining the Western Military Alliance, Russian operations against the country have increased sharply. Finnish Security and Intelligence Service warned that the same development may await Sweden. We have to be ready. Finnish Security and Intelligence Service's acting head Timu Turunen told Swedish local broadcaster SVT Nayeta. You should never underestimate the capabilities of the Russian intelligence service. They are skilled and we must be ready, he added. Sweden's accession to NATO is proof that Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine has failed. Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said, when President Putin launched his full-scale invasion two years ago, he wanted less NATO and more control over his neighbors. The Norwegian politician said, Ukraine is preparing to take back Crimea, which could cause Putin to lose control over the Kremlin. 
The intelligence missions in the Black Sea are preparations for a serious operation in the temporarily occupied Crimea, said Kirillo Budanov, Ukraine's top spy. However, such a message can be viewed from both optimistic and pessimistic points of view. Volodymyr Zablotsky, a Ukrainian naval expert at Defense Express, retired captain of the first rank, told Radio NV. From an optimistic point of view, something is being prepared that will lead to changes in the temporarily occupied peninsula and to its early return to its historical homeland, Zablotsky said. The return of Crimea to Ukraine's control could dramatically change the situation in Russia itself. The expert hints that dictator Vladimir Putin may be left at least without power. Crimea is a sacred territory for some in the Kremlin, and whoever owns the peninsula may determine the position and life of the owner of the Kremlin. However, Zablotsky suggests another scenario. From a pessimistic point of view, if this is made public before anything happens there, it could be a statement intended to deceive the enemy to mislead them about our next steps. Russia occupied Crimea in late February 2014. Ukraine has not controlled this territory for over 10 years. However, the liberation of the peninsula is considered crucial by many experts for Ukraine's victory in the war with Russia. For example, former commander of the US Army in Europe, Ben Hodges, stated earlier, Crimea is what we call a decisive territory. Whoever controls Crimea wins this war.